Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about how to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. All right, so let's see. We are going to start on the first page. There we go. We're going to start with a little review on properties of parallelograms. So the first property is that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. I'm just quickly going to mark these on my diagram. In the last video, we covered these more in depth, so you can always refer back to that one. All right, uh, the next property is that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent here. Next one is that consecutive pairs of angles are supplementary. So again, if I have an angle here, whether it's any degrees, I'm going to say it's 100 to make it nice and easy, then consecutive angles, so the angles on either side of it, have to add up to 180 degrees. So they're supplementary. And then the fourth one is that diagonals bisect each other. So here I can show that with my markings. Diagonals cut each other in half. All right, so now the properties are going to be very important when we're talking about how to prove that a quadrilateral is parallelogram. So the first one, we can use the first property and prove that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So if I can prove that this is true, then it has to be a parallelogram. The next one is that I could prove that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent here, and then that would have to be a parallelogram. The third way to prove it is that proving that one angle is supplementary to both of its, both of its consecutive angles. So you have to prove that it's, it's supplementary to both of the angles on either side of it. All right. Um, Let's see, so that would be, oops, if this one was 100, I would have to prove that this one was 80 and this one was 80, so you have to prove both of them. All right, number four, I could prove that the diagonals bisect each other, just like that fourth property. So if I knew the diagonals, then if I prove that they were both bisected, that would prove that it's a parallelogram. Now this fifth one, notice we only had four properties of parallelograms. We have five ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram because of this fifth one, and it's really cool. I'm going to show you how it works next. So proving that one pair of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel. So just choose one pair of sides and prove that they are both congruent and that they're parallel, and that gives you a parallelogram as well. So let's go down to this example and see how this all works. So given a quadrilateral EFGH with coordinates, so let's graph these coordinates. We have the coordinate for E at 2, 1, 3, 4 is my F, 7, 2 is G, oops, which means I need to move my E over a little bit over here. And H is going to be 6, negative 1. So here is my quadrilateral, and I want to prove that this is a parallelogram. So first thing you want to do is look at all those five methods that we just learned and pick one. <laughs> just pick one, whatever one you think might be easiest. Now personally, if I have a problem like this, I steer away from 2 and 3 because it's really difficult to figure out those angles if you're just given a graph. Figuring out the angles is, is a lot more complicated than figuring out the lengths of the sides or whether or not they're parallel. So I like to stick with either number one, number four, or number five. And because number five is a little different than the properties, I'm gonna go with that one because it's fun, it's, it's a little different. So number five, again, and let's, let's just write what we have to prove here. We have to prove that one pair of sides is congruent and parallel. So in order to prove that the sides are congruent, we're going to need to find the lengths of the two sides that are across from each other, so just one pair of opposite sides. All right, and then we need to find that they're parallel, and to do that, 
we need to find the slopes. To prove that two lines are parallel, we show that the slopes are the same. So it doesn't matter which um, pair of sides that we choose on this problem. I think I'm going to choose F, G, and E, H. Why not? So let's look. Let's do lengths first. So we're going to find F, G, and E, H. So just choose one pair of opposite sides and we're going to find the lengths for those. We can use distance formula or my favorite, I like to use Pythagorean theorem. If we're going to use Pythagorean theorem, we need to go from F to G and make a right triangle and find the lengths of those sides. So here I go from 3 to 7, so this length is 4. And this goes from 4 to 2, so that's 2. So now I can set up FG as the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared. So it's kind of like a mash between Pythagorean theorem and distance formula. It's my favorite method to finding the lengths of sides. All right, and then we simplify. So that's 16 plus 4, which is 20 which is going to be 2 root 5, simplifying, always simplify your square roots. All right, and then we need to find EH. So now we come down to EH, and I go straight down and over, and this went from 1 to negative 1, so that's 2, and this went from 2 to 6, so that's 4, and as you can probably tell, they are going to be the same. So here we have 2 squared plus 4 squared, which is the same as we had before, we just want to show all of our work so we carry it through. All right, now I have shown and I want to conclude that FG is congruent to EH. So when we're proving things like this using our, our algebraic work, we really do want to make those conclusions based on our work instead of just stopping at our lengths. We want to say what that length means if both of the lengths are the same then we conclude that FG is congruent to EH. All right, now I need the second piece of that, which is to find the slopes. Notice how I'm organizing and labeling all my work. It makes it nice and easy for your teacher to grade. All right, so now we find the slopes of FG and the slope of EH using our slope formula, so our points, our uh, rise over run, or Y2 over Y1. So from F to G, we have a 4 minus a negative 1 over, let me see, oops, I'm using F and H. Whoops, always be careful about your points. So F and G, so there we go, 4 minus 2 over 3 minus 7. So that's going to be 2 over negative 4, which is negative 1 half. And because we have a graph, we could have also used our graph to find the slopes, but a lot of the times we want to use our formulas all right, and then EH, 1 minus a negative 1 over 2 minus 6. That's going to be 1 plus 1, which is 2, over negative 4, which is also a negative 1 half. So, again, we want to make our conclusion based on this information. Oops. Use the same colors here. So, FG is parallel to EH. And we're done. Since we showed, we used that fifth method, and we showed that opposite sides, one pair of opposite sides, were both congruent and parallel to each other. It has to be a parallelogram. All right, so that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.